how's it going today? This is Ron Felton with Home Inspection Services, and we're here today with Tyler Harmon from Harmon Pest Control. Yes, sir. And we thought we would take a few minutes today to talk to you about um, a structural pest inspection and what that uh, specifically entails during the real estate process. And so, Tyler, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about your company, how long you've been around? Yeah, Harmon Pest Control, we've been around for almost 10 years now. And we've been in the business for uh, over 20 years. It's a family business, and um, we've been working closely with Ron and doing a lot of good things in the community with, with real estate and with uh, different organizations. And um, what uh, our pest inspection uh, entails is um, a you know full home inspection for wood destroying pests and organisms, and uh, it is a. Uh, inspection of all visible and accessible areas uh, in the exterior and on the interior of the home and sometimes you know we go into the attics as well if there's evidence that leads us to go up there and mm -hmm. we always check sure. up inside the attic okay and so um, you, now your company does structural pest inspections but mm -hmm. you also have another division of your company that does uh, pest pest type work yeah that's right um, along with all of our pest inspections you receive a uh, a work authorization page which entails all of the items we've found on our pest inspection and uh, as well as doing the inspections we also have an aspect of our company that allows us to do the work so that we can get you the clearance for your home and um, get the problems that are affecting your home taken care of. Sure and so now when you do a pest inspection and you take that work and that work is done by you or another company let's say a licensed contractor correct? Mm -hmm. Um, can anyone do can anyone do structural pest work? Yeah, um, anybody can do the work, and um, we will come back out and look at the work and make sure it's up to code, and then we'll be able to certify it. But we do we put a disclosure that says you know we're not responsible for anybody else's work because uh, we we definitely like to make sure that things are done properly and professionally, and that's one of the things that we pride ourselves on. Okay, in our company. sure. Now, let's let's let the people know because they need to know the difference. Can, can I, when you tell me I have termites inside of my home, mm -hmm. can I go to Home Depot and grab a gallon of uh, the best stuff, the they, best got. stuff they got yeah. um, and put that in a jug and spray it around my house and have the same effect and get a clearance from you for treating my house for termites? No, it definitely will not have the same effect. And okay. that's, uh, we're licensed through the state to be able to use uh, specific chemicals that are going to uh, give you the highest quality treatment and ensure you safety from your home from termites and other wood destroying organisms. Sure, so it's important for people to know that, that termite companies are highly regulated, not just in the work that they do, what they can call and what they can't call for work, but also in the chemicals that they use, how much they use, exactly. and that's all monitored, written down, and it's in a database. Now, um, once a pest inspection is done on a home, then people can go to the state's website after 10 days that gets recorded and they can request a copy of any report that's been done on a house for two years. Now where's that website at? That's right, that's uh, structuralboard.ca.gov. Uh, yeah. So that's structuralboard? Yeah, structuralboard.ca.gov. Structural board yeah. Or you can just do a Google search for a California Structural Pest Control Board and yeah. you'll find the website as well. Okay, now um, the big confusion I see all the time is when we get done with doing an inspection, people come up to me and they say, how come the termite guy didn't say anything about cockroaches? <laughs> how come he didn't say anything about ants? Yeah, Are exactly. you looking for we cockroaches and ants? No, nope, we're not looking for cockroaches and ants. We're strictly looking for things that destroy wood. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you were going to want to get, uh, that's just a, a actual pest inspection. What we do is a wood destroying organisms uh, and inspection. So. Uh -huh. It's a big differentiation, but it does get confused a lot. Uh -huh. um, and um, yeah, we don't look for those kind of things. Just but your company does do yes pest work. Yes, that's right. And we have another aspect of our company that does that handles the pest side of the uh, business. So if you are having problems with roaches or ants or any of that type of thing, mm -hmm. then we also cover that as well. Rodents. Rodents. Yeah. Bees. Bees. Creepy crawly things. All the all the uh -huh. good stuff. That's yeah. your mom's line, huh? Yeah, mom is crazy. <laughs> she handles the, awesome. the wild side of it. <laughs> nice. Okay. Yeah. And so that kind of covers what um, a pest inspection is, what the difference is between a bug that just is an environmental bug, we would say, that sometimes leaves when the occupant leaves, and then bugs that are directly attached to the house. Now, 
what let's we've talked about what that what that is but what is a wood destroying organism and what is a wood destroying insect okay what's the difference a wood destroying organism is something more along the lines of dry rot or brown rot these types of funguses that uh, attack wood members and they they attack the cellulose in the wood and um, you know that happens just from wood and water contact mm -hmm. so if uh, if water's contacting wood enough and if it's not properly sealed and sure. maintained then it's going to become damaged by those types of uh, wood destroying organisms whereas a wood destroying insect would be something more along the lines of termites or there's wood destroying beetles uh, carpenter bees carpenter ants and these are um, these are nuisance pests that destroy wood and that's the difference between the pest aspect sure. and the wood destroying. They, they live in the wood and they destroy yeah. it in the process. They're exactly. eating it. It's part of their diet, correct? Yeah, that's right. their main source of food. All right. And not all rot, true, needs water to exist, and not all termites need um, water to exist either, correct? That's right, yeah. And there's different the, kinds of termites and there's different kinds of rot. Yep, that's yep. exactly right. Okay. There's so, the uh, subterranean termite, right, which, which we're, everyone knows about. Yeah, right? those ones come from the ground, and they, they do need the moisture in mm -hmm. order to survive. But then there's another uh, termite that's called the drywood termite, and those are the ones where you see people have to get tents put on their house uh -huh. because um, these termites, they don't have uh, an access point from the ground or anything. They find their moisture from the wood itself, so they, they attack the main structure, and uh, it's harder to get rid of them, so that's sure. why you have to fumigate. Have to fumigate it, right. Yeah. And then the other type, you, you treat... The soil. The soil. Yeah, and it's so a soil treatment, and it's a pretty much putting a barrier in between the structure of your house and the ground below it awesome. everywhere. That that's great information right yeah. there. That, that tells people a lot. Mm -hmm. So um, now dry rot, obviously, no way to superficially treat that. No. No, nope. with dry rot, it's kind of a remove and replace type thing where That's right. if you have a damaged wood member on the exterior or interior of your home that has dry rot to it, then uh, there's no way to uh, like treat the wood members to make it better. You have to replace the wood members and properly seal it and maintain it. So and then get rid of the cause of a problem to begin with, too, as well. Of course, yeah. Yep. A lot of the times you'll see where people will repair something, but they won't repair what caused the damage at sure. first. And you got to make sure that, you know, if the sink's leaking and it damages these wood members, you don't just want to fix this section one wood member that's damaged. You want to fix the item that is causing the damage as well. Okay, perfect. And yeah. so um, now we see these huge discrepancies in termite reports. If one guy's charging fifty dollars to fix something, another guy's charging one hundred and fifty dollars to fix yeah. something. And I typically know that your pricing is a little bit higher than some other prices that I see because mm -hmm. we have what's called a for lack of better terms, a scab scab work or a hack work, yeah. which is uh, where a guy comes in and he cuts out the rotten piece of wood and replaces it with a small chunk of wood. Mm -hmm. And then you have people that do things from a, a carpenter standpoint where the entire board is removed yeah. and that whole board is replaced instead of just a chunk. And that's pretty much what your company does, right? Yeah, and you're absolutely right. We, we are um, maybe 15 to 20 percent more sure. expensive, but that all goes into... Uh, you know, you, in, in layman's terms, you get what you pay for yep. in anything, and we really do pride ourselves on doing the most professional work possible, and like Ron was saying, we're not going to uh, jimmy-rig some wood together to make it look nice. If sure. something's damaged, we're going to make sure it's structurally sound, replace the whole wood member. To the way it looked when you got there. I, exactly. Minus the dry rot. Yeah, minus the dry rot, and mm -hmm. we're going to make sure that it's painted, uh, you know, to match, and we're going to seal it and we're going to you know, do the best possible job. Okay, so there's different sections of the report, section one, section two, and further uh, identification of a problem. Mm -hmm. Now, you don't just call section one stuff, which is the, the obvious termite and obvious dry rot, but there'll be times when you're going to make comments that are going to uh, be related to something that's going to cause one of those problems. And so what, give us a little insight into what that section two area might be. Yeah, section two is uh, any item that is conducive, that it's a, it's a condition that could possibly lead to there being damage. So section two is something like a leaky faucet mm -hmm. or a leaky tub valve that could leak into the wall and cause damage. Uh -huh. um, or wood up against the uh, siding. Of course, yeah. You never want to have uh, you know, dirt touching the wood on your house because it creates a direct access point for wood-destroying organisms sure. like termites and that kind of thing, uh -huh. and even dry rot to affect the wood members there. Yep. Okay. So you're going to give recommendations in that case for the removal of the dirt or the leaky faucet to be repaired, and that's going to be yep. uh, a quote in your estimate? 
Yes, of uh -huh. course. Yep. And sure. we put bids on, on all of our reports. We, uh, we bid every item we have. So not only are you getting uh, you know, an entire inspection on your home and finding out what's going on with it and what items are damaged or could lead to damage, uh -huh. you're also getting a price that could give you some bartering tools or at least knowledge on how much it's going to cost to have your home sure. at tip-top condition. Uh -huh. So that money might be coming out of your budget or it might be coming out of the seller's budget, and it's good to know what that's going to cost. Yeah, definitely. All right, perfect. Mm -hmm. And so not so popular nowadays, but there was a time when banks required that the Section 1 stuff be cleared on a property prior to the close of escrow. And yeah. since bank owns the, the bank, yeah. bank owns the house now, they're not asking it be done. But I imagine that day will change when the banks will once again request that everything be repaired mm -hmm. in the Section 1 area. Yep. Okay, so that pretty much runs us through that whole process. Process, and I think that's going to shed a lot of uh, light onto the uh, dark tunnel of termite inspections <laughs> that we always, yeah. you know, I'm sure no one really knows anything about until they hear it straight from the horse's mouth. And so let's just kind of go spend a few minutes right now mm -hmm. and uh, tell me what, like, if we went around the exterior of a home, mm -hmm. you know, I know different exteriors, you got wood siding, stucco siding, and yeah. different aspects and all that. But if we walked around, the exterior of the home, what would be, let's say, in the top 10 common things that you would be looking for, what would that be? Well, we're going to be checking all of the siding, and like as for this home, we would be checking all of the wood siding. Mm -hmm. We would be checking all of the exterior posts. Uh, we would be checking the eaves, making sure that the fascia board and the rafter tails and roof sheathing is properly maintained and not damaged. Um, and a lot of the times, if the roof is going bad, then those areas will become affected. Uh, we check the window trim and uh, all of the area around the house, making sure that the uh, exterior of the home isn't at any faulty grade, uh, which means we don't want um, the termites to have a direct access into the home, uh -huh. so we're making sure that there's no areas where dirt is pushed up against the or side. Or water of the house. can intrude. Or water, exactly, because uh, water is the basis of our whole our whole job pretty much mm -hmm. it all revolves around Mine as water. well yep so we have to make sure that uh, everything is um, properly sealed and so it doesn't get ma uh, damaged so we're not just looking for damage again but we're looking for things that are going to eventually cause you damage yeah leaky rain gutters yep definitely vegetation against the side of the home mm -hmm. okay and uh, faulty grade drainage things like that yeah and areas where we can visibly see access where termites are making their way into the home. Now, this is one that always comes across. You have a patio structure or a fence that's in the dirt. Mm -hmm. You don't want anything in the house touching the dirt. They attach the patio to the house or the fence to the house. What happens? Well, with fences, uh, a lot of the time I'll make a call to have the fence separated from the house with flashing uh -huh. so that that doesn't have to be sure. included in the report because that can get pretty extensive. A lot of the time fences are not in the greatest shape, but uh, as for decks and patios and that sort of thing, um, whenever those are attached, um, we inspect them and we make sure that they're uh, properly put together and that there's no damage to them. And um, yeah, a lot it of the time. It becomes part of the structure. Yeah, it becomes part of the structure. And a lot of the times, those patios and decks are the things having the toughest times or they're in the roughest shape. To get cleared, huh? Yeah, because right. um, people don't really see it as part of the structure, so uh -huh. they don't take as well care of it. And sure. They end up going bad most of the time. Uh -huh, but when two trees touch and one's on fire, the other tree's on fire too. And that's kind of the same thing with the pest. When they, remove, when they move up through the dirt into the fence or the deck, then they're going to eventually move through the deck and the fence into the home, and that's no yeah. different. Yeah, that's right. And a lot of people uh, sometimes have a hard time understanding that, uh, you know, they don't understand how that could be part of the home inspection or the, the pest inspection, the termite inspection. Uh -huh. And it's just because, you know, we have to include anything that is attached to the structure in our reports. Sure. Okay. And so that kind of gives us a rundown of the exterior of the home. Once again, we're uh, uh, the pest control, the, the pest inspector's job is to look at siding gutters, grading, trim, door jams, decks, 
patio covers, roof eaves, fences that are attached, any point of attachment on the house. And uh, that kind of gives you a rundown. Obviously looking for roof leaks. Those water can cause problems interior and exterior when there's roof leaks. And so now that we're kind of done with that rundown, we're going to take a trip inside and go through a bathroom, a kitchen, interior, just for a few minutes, kind of, you know, find out what they're looking for in there. And then we're going to come back outside and we're going to kick this thing off. Okay, so we're now in the kitchen. Um, we decided that we weren't going to shoot a video in the bathroom. It's too small. Um, and it was just an awkward place to be with a camera. Um, this, the bathrooms in this house were very small, and so even the largest bathroom would be hard to shoot a decent video. But let's just take a couple seconds, Tyler. And wh what are you looking for when you get in the bathroom? The kitchen's not really much different, right? I mean, other yeah. than the, the shower and the tub obviously has a lot of water on a daily use, but mm -hmm. um, what, what kind of stuff are you looking for in a bathroom? Well, a lot of the times it's plumbing related. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to make sure that the kitchen sink, or not the kitchen, but the bathroom sink is uh -huh. functioning properly, checking the plumbing, making sure the faucet isn't leaking, um, because all those things could possibly lead to damage if they get on the wood members sure. around there in the cabinet. Um, we want to make sure that the sheetrock uh, adjacent to the tubs and the mm -hmm. showers and by the sink and everything is all, um, you know, not damaged from previous leaks or leaks that are happening right uh -huh. now and um, making sure that things are sealed properly as well by the sinks because a lot of the time if a sink isn't sealed properly it could get into the countertop area and uh, damage the countertop and that can get sure. kind of costly. Exactly. And so uh, toilets? Toilets as well, yeah. We make sure the toilet isn't leaking, make sure it's tight so mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, if it, it becomes loose, the wax ring could possibly leak out and sure. cause damage to and the floor. A, and a huge problem when it's a raised foundation or a wood floor versus a slab where it's concrete. Yeah, a lot of the times on a, a slab foundation, the, the damage will be more cosmetic to the linoleum and that kind of uh -huh. thing. But to a raised foundation home, you can have really extensive damage if your toilet's failing and leaking. Yep, and um, you don't know about it. Yeah, exactly. All right, and what about like uh, shower enclosures? Yep, we test, the, uh, we test the shower enclosures to make sure that they're not leaking out. We, we point the shower head onto the glass enclosure or whatever the enclosure mm -hmm. might be to make sure it's sealed properly, um, as well as, uh, you know, testing the pans on the showers um, for the tile showers and uh -huh. different, various different types of showers to make sure that um, the pan's working properly and not leaking out and allowing water to contact any of the wood members of the walls that and, uh, could cause a lot of damage. And leaky valves. Yeah, the valves as well. Um, we want to make sure that the valves and the tubs and the showers are all working properly so that they don't leak back into the wall or cause any damage that way. Okay, and so kitchen, pretty much same rundown in the kitchen? Yeah, pretty much the same thing, making sure the plumbing's working properly. Uh, this sink in particular, you know, needs to be maintained around the... A lot the, of cracks uh, and voids. Yeah, which could, you know, water could possibly get inside the countertop there and cause sure. damage. and. We want to make sure that uh, the sheetrock and the false bottom shelf down there is all um, working properly and not damaged. This one doesn't look too bad and making sure the plumbing's all working properly. Ever the inspector, he's here doing the video, but he's still <laughs> checking things out. He's already done with this house. He's still looking. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so um, now um, this is a slab, but you crawl underneath the house too, right? Yeah. Big, yeah. big part of your job. Huge part, yeah. Right. And we crawl every corner of the house, making sure that we check uh, you know, every, every area underneath the house from all the piers, the posts, the girders, the subfloor, the, uh, the rim joist, which is on top of the foundation sure. wall underneath. Checking for termites. Checking for termites, dry rot. We go to underneath all the bathrooms, uh -huh. which is a, another huge part of the inspection for a raised foundation home is going under uh, the bathrooms and making sure that the plumbing is all working properly, that there haven't been any leaks that have caused damage to the wood members below sure. the shower. Uh, making sure that the shower pan isn't failing from underneath, which a lot of the times if a shower pan does fail on a raised foundation... You're going to know about it. Yeah, it's going to mm -hmm. be a lot of damage and a lot of water. And a lot of money. A lot of money, yeah. <laughs> it's expensive to change one of those shower pans. Sure. Yeah. Okay, so I think people kind of get the idea of what your job is and what you're looking for, but you go around the interior rooms too? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Not looking for plumbing leaks, obviously, unless yeah. it's a... Uh, 
two-story house, you might be looking in the ceiling for some, but what are you looking for when you walk around the interior rooms? Yeah, exactly. On a two-story home, you know, we, we definitely, I make a big, big part of my job is uh, making sure that I go beneath those, those bathrooms and the upstairs mm -hmm. levels to check for staining or any evidence that there's leakage or sure. damage going on. Um, and then on, you know, just uh, ordinary rooms on a single story or on the first story of the second story, uh, making sure that all the uh, walls are not stained and making sure that there's no termites coming up on any cracks in the mm -hmm. foundation or up on the interior of the pier post from underneath. Okay. And just uh, uh, roof leaks. Roof leaks, checking for Staining. roof leaks, stains. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and on the older homes, a lot of times that's where you'll find the roof leaks. Mm -hmm. and the wood shingle type roofs have a lot of problems. Yeah, when they're 20, 30 years old. Yeah, yep. definitely. And um, checking the window sills and uh, the jams of the sheetrock to make sure that, you know, sometimes people leave their windows open to get fresh air and forget about it. Rain damages the window jam that's and window sill. still water damage. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And we, that's, that's what we're looking for. It all has to do with water and, mm -hmm. um, you know. And it can be caused environmentally. It can be caused from somebody running the shower and letting the water come out. Or it can be caused from an actual accident. Uh, uh, repair item on their house, not just from the, you don't care how it's caused, you yeah, just you exactly. know, noting that it's there. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter if you're, you know, you have some sheetrock damage by your tub from getting in and right. out of the tub every day, or if uh, there's a leak at the sink which is causing damage sure. to your cabinets. Sometimes one's easier to fix than the other. I mean, if you exactly. got kids that are getting water out of the tub, it's easy to do. You just get rid of the kids <laughs> and then you don't have any more water getting That's out right. of the tub. You Simple know? fix there, no right. money, nothing. Uh -huh. Yeah, but exactly. Then, you got your shower pans that leak and that's, that's not from the kids, right? Yeah. So, so the moral of that story is it's just cheaper to not have kids, right? <laughs> that's <laughs> exactly right. It's a poor financial decision. <laughs> Anyways, that pretty much uh, takes care of walking us through the interior and so we appreciate that. Now we're gonna, uh, we're just gonna go back outside, I guess, and wrap this thing up. Sounds good. All right. Okay, now wasn't that fun? Yeah. That about covers what it, a structural pest control board inspection entails. Um, we thank Tyler for hanging out with us today and thank you, Ron. enlightening us. Um, now, let's give him some information. Definitely. People want to uh, order a pest inspection. We, we order pest inspections with almost all of our home inspections. We, a long time ago, figured out that everybody is doing that on their own. We include roof and pest along with our home inspections because it's a vital part of the process, especially during a real estate transaction. But you may be watching this and decide that you don't want a home inspection or a roof inspection or that you're not even in an escrow process and that you just want some uh, bug work done on your house or a termite inspection done on your house. What's the cost of a termite inspection? Termite inspections run anywhere from 90 and they, they go up in increments of, um, you know, anywhere to 150. Uh, it just all depends on the square footage sure. and how big the home and is. And you guys cover Modesto, Stockton, yeah, Galtz. We cover a lot of the Central Valley. Central Valley, all yeah. the way down to Turlock. Yep. Some lower foothill areas. Mm -hmm. not, not too far into the East Bay, but... Yeah. Tracy, Livermore type area, maybe this direction. Yeah, definitely. All right, so, you know, a circle, a 50 mile circle around uh, Modesto and Stockton pretty much gives you an idea. Now, yep. how can we get a hold of you? Well, you can visit us at HarmonPestControlInc.com or you can contact us at our office in Modesto at 522-1475. Area code? 209. 209-522-1475 or HarmonPestControlInc. Dot com. And right. so, thanks for hanging out with us today. Have a great day. Thank you very much. Have a good one. Awesome.